Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about two exciting new bikes, the company behind them and the possible impact they may have on the industry long term. CF Moto Day is a yearly show and celebration where CF Moto look to motivate their workforce and raise media attention ready for the upcoming global show season. We looked at the new CF Moto 450SR Twin earlier in the year and now we have the first glimpse of two more bigger new sports bikes. They will both sit in the range above the 450 SR I featured previously. The 450 has still not made it to the UK, but they will get here, and to the rest of the world, that is for sure. We already have the first comments about an all new 450 MT adventure motorcycle based on the 450 Twin platform, and both of these two new models are likely to be developed into other motorcycles too. The two new motorcycles both look complete and ready for production. These aren't prototypes strapped together with beta twine and cable ties. Both look interesting and I think could be big market movers. The first, the CF Moto 500SR, is a 4 cylinder 500cc sports bike that would be unique in the current market. The engine uses forged pistons, a low inertia crank, inverted forks, twin front discs and radial calipers and it's stated can easily run up to speeds of around 140 miles an hour or 230 kilometers an hour. However, it's the second I'm more intrigued by. That second motorcycle has a theoretically all new 3 cylinder 675cc engine that according to the announcements has been in development for 10 years. But has it really? Details are sparse at the minute, but in terms of equipment, the CF Moto 675SR is equipped with inverted front forks, twin front discs and radial calipers, and it looks to have a lower, more aggressive rider triangle, so it would be more sporty. And the aerodynamics and design of the fairing is also more sharp and aggressive too. Expect both bikes to be a higher spec than the SR450. The 500SR should be more than capable of producing 75 to 90 horsepower and maybe pushed even further. The 675SR could also easily be tuned to well over 100 horsepower. So these aren't going to be learner bikes or just commuter transport. However, both could be easily restricted for A2 license use for the various markets where that's needed. Both bikes are likely to be launched to see the CMO Motor Show in Chongqing on the 15th of September or later in the year at ICMA, so keep your ears and eyes open for news. There have been rumours of a 1000cc V4 sports bike too, but so far that looks less likely, at least for now. We know a part of CF Motor's success has been because as a company they have been very good at forming alliances and extracting the most out of strategic partnerships. However, from this latest move, I would say that they are also reading the market better than most of the existing big players. The new guarantees on their motorcycles are better than anyone else in the industry is offering, which is a tactic that worked very well for high Hyundai and Kia in the car industry. RCF Moto set to do what Honda and the other Japanese companies did in the 1970s? Back then, the long-standing manufacturers of the world got complacent, were lazy and overconfident. The then new Japanese companies listened and gave customers what they were asking for. That is why Japan won the market over back then. CF Moto do seem to be the ones listening now. How long have our cries for smaller, lighter bikes fallen on deaf ears now? CF Moto's wide-ranging agreements with the Piera Mobility Group and KTM are fairly well known, but you may not know that they have been gradually amassing an increased shareholding in the Piera Mobility Group. This increases their influence on the KTM board too. They are a big company with massive production facilities, and they have many other partners you may or may not have come across. What we already know about the latest part of the KTM agreement is that CF Moto motorcycles will be in showrooms next to KTM bikes in many countries by next year, and that CF Moto will be making the parts for themselves, KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas, and probably MV Augusta too. 
Also, Peer and Mobility will be acting as global distributors for all of the parts for each and every one of those companies. So each company gets the cheapest parts from CF Moto. They share a huge distribution network that benefits from the savings of scaling. CF Moto gets a cheap and fast way to market that places their bikes in a high-end environment. And KTM gets to sell bikes to people that would just never normally buy a KTM. That sounds like a win-win-win situation, but things are really as simple as that. What does it mean for customers in the long term? Well, I certainly can't see retail domination by a small number of large multi-brand dealerships bringing prices down in the long term. It may be that there are initially targeted price drops aimed at increasing market share on a short-term basis, but these will only last as long as there are competitors who haven't been killed off. And is it really a choice when the choice is five versions of the same thing? Now, let us make no bones about it. One of the things CF Moto has proved very good at is taking existing engines and improving them, as well as making them cheaper to manufacture. It is CF Moto we really have to thank for the KTM 790 and 890 engine, and before that, they took the Kawasaki ER6 engine and redesigned it to pass Euro 5 emission standards, which Kawasaki had failed to do at the time. So where has this new 675cc triple engine come from, I hear you ask? My first thoughts indeed were Triumph, but somehow there was a backroom deal done to redevelop the older Triumph 675 engine. But then I realised... Peer and Mobility have had access to all of the MV Augusta records and paperwork for a fairly long time now. So could it be that the 675SR is actually a Chinese-made MV Augusta F3 675cc engine? They have had information for a while, but not for that long. Is it even possible that CF Moto could deconstruct, redesign and produce an engine like that in one or two years? Well... I would say if anyone could, CF Moto probably could. Studying the pictures, the engine layout looks much more like the MV than the Triumph from whichever side you look, but so far everything is covered up a lot with bodywork, so it is hard to say with any accuracy. There are other questions this brings out too though. We know how KTM have put themselves in a very strong position in the world of racing, Dorna and the FIA know that if KTM decided to, they could decimate the grid of either MotoGP or World Superbikes, killing both dead. That, I think, is a very dangerous situation for racing, and let us be real, it gives them unprecedented influence over future decisions. Do KTM, Pierre and Mobility and CF Moto have a long-term plan to replace the Triumph triple engine used in Moto2 with a CF Moto manufactured MV Augusta design? With KTM's influence in the MotoGP paddock, I'm under no illusions that they will be pushing for that, and their engine would inevitably be cheaper, so it plays into the Dorna narrative to make racing cheaper too. Outside of racing, we can see an emerging theme, we know that KTM are applying the tactics used by the Volkswagen Group in the car industry in an attempt to dominate the European motorcycle industry, and their plan so far seems to be succeeding, with an ever-growing portfolio of brands. If they succeed or not, they won't stop at Europe. CF Moto have bigger and better manufacturing facilities than most of the motorcycle manufacturers across the globe, and unlike Pierre and Mobility in the Bajaj Group, CF Auto haven't got into this dominant position by ploughing money into existing companies. They have got there by investing in themselves, doing the work and getting the most from every deal they make. When KTM have a dominant place in the market, CF Moto do too. So the more dominant Piero Mobility and the KTM group become, the bigger CF Moto become and the more reliant all of the KTM Group brands become on them. Are CF Moto actually the ones set to become the dominant force in the European motorcycle industry by default? Pierre Mobility 
have a better global distribution set up than most motorcycle manufacturers, and now have control over multiple brands that all have their own loyal following. KTM Group have the obvious sales network already in place, and despite announcements to the contrary, some dealers are already set up to take on parts and servicing for MV Augusta. So it's more likely that the big KTM dealerships will soon be the ones stocking and selling MV Augusta motorcycles alongside KTM and CF Moto bikes. I can only see this system expanding. Will we have Husqvarna and Gas Gas bikes in the same mega dealerships too in the future? The cost will be to the smaller dealerships, who simply don't have the space or finances to operate a multi-brand franchise. I do wonder if it will dilute the skill sets of the dealers too, instead of single brand specialists who know the brand inside out, will they simply operate as a sales room and servicing department, with servicing done on a simple replace and refit model? Real maintenance is much more than fitting new parts as we all know, and if parts are manufactured cheaply enough, it can often be cheaper to replace things rather than fix them, because the labour costs are now higher. However, that means the specialists who know how to repair rather than simply replace will soon be in a very vulnerable position. That is not a good thing for the industry from my perspective. One positive though is that the emergence of CF Moto's 500SR and 675SR and other new motorcycles like the Zhangshen Cyclone RC680R and the Vosjar R660 4 cylinder sports bikes will bring another shock to the market, especially because the Japanese middleweight 4 cylinder models haven't been revised for many years or have simply been replaced with twin cylinder alternatives. If CF Moto sees the market with better specifications and cheaper prices, I think it will put a lot of pressure on the Japanese manufacturers to come up with something new, and we may see the re-emergence of the supersport sector we loved so much. What do you think? Are Piero Mobility and CF Moto good for the motorcycle industry? Do you think this is based on the MV design? And what does that mean for the future of MV Augusta? With CF Moto now offering much better guarantees than KTM for what is effectively the same tech built in the same factory, will they be on the road to a significantly increased market share? I will look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments. If you got this far and haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing will mean you get to find out first when our regular updates, news, views and other videos go out each and every week. Please share the video with anyone you think might be interested too if you could. It all helps kick the YouTube algorithm into gear and gets the channel out there to new potential viewers. You can visit the website or the Red Bull shop linked in the description below for the best biker t-shirts and other merchandise too. There are more exciting motorcycle adventures and other stories from the shed and beyond on the website. So why not grab a cuppa and take a look around? You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. I hope you get some great riding in. Ride free everyone.